Good morning. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Redding, California. Uh, we are technically Facebook Live only today, but because Shasta County changed their designation yesterday, uh, we're allowed to have people in the audience. So we have some wonderful people here with us today, and we're really happy to have a live audience. But we are here today, uh, Facebook Live as well, like I mentioned. Next Sunday, we will be open again for a live service and with social distancing protocols in place and masks and the, the whole nine yards. But um, we continue on, and we know that we have that, that um, bubble of protection, you know, within our own spiritual soul and our, who we are for wherever we go, you know, and we hold that for the world as well. So I'm Charlie Bourne, and... You know, we uh, welcome everyone here today, uh, whether online or in service. We, uh, you know, at our center, we, you know, it's a center where we inspire and empower people to live spiritually fulfilling lives. And we can really take that to heart as we work day to day with our interactions with everyone, as we see the world, how as, as we hold a place of peace and comfort and well-being for all. So I'd like to thank Damien for being here to help us get our service going, as well as he's going to be doing our reading today. I'm skipping different parts of our <laughs> service. <laughs> so we, um, I do have a few invitations. Um, so we do have a Wednesday morning a midweek pickup Zoom call. And... And because Sue does this from home, I get to sort of witness what it's like. And there's some really profound sharing on these midweek pickup calls. And so if you haven't done it yet, find out the Zoom call in and get that invitation. It's some really heartfelt sharing and people just checking in for the week. And they talk about the talk, you know, from Sunday. But whatever's going on, it's, it's a wonderful uh, pickup. The, uh, the men's group with Roy Wolfstad is meeting Monday, October 26, 7 to 9 p.m. via Zoom. And you can check uh, with the center for getting uh, the link to that. And then remember, next Sunday we fall back. Daylight savings time ends. So we get, I think we get more daylight in the morning. <laughs> I think that's the way it works. So um, just remember to change your clock and and we'll know who paid attention on Sunday morning when we come to service. So with that in mind, I'd like to invite Damien up uh, to do the reading. And then following that will be invitation of the bell three times. And during that time, uh, take advantage of that space to go within, allow the bell to penetrate deeply into your soul and to really contemplate um, contemplate life in God. So Damien. Uh, I walk away as soon as he comes. So. Transition. Good morning. Our reading today is from one of our very own here at CSLR, Storm King. Acceptance is always the first step on the path to inner peace. Radical acceptance is the near instant shifting of plans. Adjust the path of desire you are on to whatever the universe is offering as quickly as possible. Attachment is the root of all suffering and complete acceptance of the here and now is letting go of attachments. Remember in times of trouble that it takes contrast to fully appreciate the joy and the beauty that our experiences also bring to us. Honor your obstacles. The higher the hill you have to climb, the greater the view will be from the top. Sorrow, grief, and even anguish are actually signposts that keep us moving towards the light. Because without them, our experience of life 
has only superficial meaning. Why am I? Because life permeates the universe so that life halts entropy in us for a time so life can see itself. The higher truth, the greater reality, the bigger, biggest picture is always that universal love and light shine on us right now from just around the corner of infinity and from just beyond the bend of eternity. All of creation is unfolding right on time. No mistakes, ever. Let go of any judgments about that to be set free from all anxiety. Relish all aspects of being human. We only get a short time at it. Never forget that humans are herd animals. It takes participation in a tribe, a village, a close community for us to ever be truly contented. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Sometimes we are the whole, sometimes we are the part. Ride that wave for whatever it will reveal. Our life is but a raindrop falling towards the ocean that is calling us home. Birth, life, and death are as natural as breathing. There is awe all around us, all the time. Because life is awesome, if we just choose to see it that way. Cultivate curiosity. Nurture harmony. Be open to adventures. The almighty isness is what it is. And it has made each individual unique and just as we are at this time, seeking our connections to each other and the oneness that underlies it all. Carpe friggin' diem, man. Be the adventure of life, seeking itself in awareness. Please join with me as we allow ourselves to recognize and feel and know that there is just one, one spirit, one love, one God. As we allow this recognition to penetrate within each of us here today, I know for myself, I know for each one of us here, that that spirit evolves and grows and expresses itself through each and every one of us in its own unique and beautifully designed way. And so as I accept this knowing and accept the divinity within myself and within others, I allow myself to go deeper and to feel the connection that we have with all of life the spiritual connection, knowing that there is that deep urge and that spark within everyone, with all life. So I allow myself to connect at that level and to live my life from that level and to allow myself to grow and to listen and to be who I am and express myself with freedom and I do this from a place of love and a place of peace and a place of harmony. So I accept this for myself and for everyone here that there is a bridge, a bridge that is so strong and so wonderful that it keeps all of us connected. So from a gratitude of love and peace and harmony, 
I accept this treatment and this prayer. And together we say, and so it is. And so now we have Reverend Sue. Good morning, my friends. Thank you, Charlie. And Damien, thank you for reading that. It was important for Storm to also tell you that Patty Ringer's good friend helped him kind of fine tune some of those words, but I thought it was just um, an incredible writing that he did. And he, he shares this uh, wisdom through um, a lot of his blogs and his writings on Facebook. And through the Wednesday calls that Charlie mentioned, I've gotten to know, know Storm in a much more personal way. So I just really value the wisdom that I realize is flowing through all of us here. And this is an opportunity to share that and to be a part of one another in that way. And this idea, Mary, um, Reverend Mary last week, launched into the idea of um, the bridges over troubled water. And so I, I continue that message from the organization overall about bridges that last. And I appreciated some of the things that um, Mary was sharing last week about some of those ingredients of bridging to one another is through forgiveness and through self-forgiveness. That was my uh, great takeaway from her message. But I, wanna, I want us to look deeper now as we're joined together at the end of this month, because this has been all about cosmic connections this month in the messaging. And what makes a bridge from our heart to another, what makes that endure? What builds a relationship that lasts? Those healthy ones that we know we can open our hearts to one another, that we can trust that, that we can open to one another without fear or hesitation. And what in your experience has been the one ingredient that you've discovered on your journey that allows that to be the base and the foundation of your heart space? You know, this also led me to, to realizing the bridges that we're building around the world um, in humanity. And so I focused this week on good news. And one of, the mess one of the messages last week that I heard came from the Prime Minister of New Zealand. And her name is Jacinda Ardern's, if I'm pronouncing it right, and she got reelected unanimously in her country. And she's a young woman. Um, I think she's just about to turn in, in her, to her 40s, but she's got a small child and she's just taking this country, uh, just rising them out of some, some deep ep economic issues. And she was, uh, by a landslide, reelected. And her graceful message of acceptance was very, very heart touching. And you can look at that just by looking up um, New Zealand Prime Minister victory speech, and it's uplifting. It's hopeful. It's optimistic. As I've shared this week, um, some of my favorite messaging is to have that relentless optimism through these times. So uh, I just want to share that, that good news message with you because New Zealand, you know how close it is to the, the beginning of this pandemic they've been able to wipe it out in their country. And their people are mask free and walking with each other and life is returning basically to normal. They're still on high watch. Anybody coming into the country is quarantined for 14 days, but they're still watching everything and they're just taking that high watch. So it's very hopeful. It's very impressive that, that we can do this. We can do this and so that, uplifts me and it, it also, I'm very grateful to, to, the, to the government to watch closely in California our numbers and tell us what's wise to do and that, that we are willing to participate in whatever we can do to make a difference, to heal. So I honor, I honor that aspect of our moving together in community. That's a bridge, that's a bridge. So there's a strong declaration in the principles of science and mind it's one of those truths that establish that foundation of connection. And this is what it is. We believe in the unity of all of life and the highest God, 
and the innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. Think about your connection to the divine and check in. Is it a personal, sin sincere connection? Because sometimes we, in life, we experience uh, moments of being triggered and we wander away from our heart a little bit and we're not as engaged with the divine. But we're turning our world, we're turning our focus from that inner to see how we can serve the world from that heart space, finding those foundational bridges that connect us to the greater good so that we each know that we're the catalyst for change. So as I, I share another st couple of stories of good, and there is good news um, sites, websites that you can go to, you know, change your profiles. One of the things that we are studying together, there's several of us studying the, the Yoga of Jesus by Paramahansa Yogananda. And this idea of making change in, and also in another class I'm doing it with Joe Dispenza, the idea is to come out of your habit world, come out of the habit things that you've been reading and, and, turn, and that's drawing your attention. Turn away from it if it's causing you any unhappiness and find the good news. Find the good news that is always unfolding out there. Be aware of what's going on, but allow ourselves to be filled with, with something greater. So this quote from Ernest Holmes back in 1995 from a, a book that they put together on on some of his writings about change. So, no greater good can come to you than to know that the power already within you is the power to live and the power to create. Not only to create for yourself, but for others. The power to do good, the power to heal, the power to prosper. You are to realize that the power within you is a divine authority. It is a dispenser of the divine gifts. It is a giver of life and of joy. It proclaims the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is your happiness. So it, is, it proclaims the kingdom of happiness, the harmony of the soul, and the unity of all being. That is Ernest Holmes' thoughts on invoking change. So a couple of things that I wanted to share that you might find amusing. One I found very thrilling, and this was last week also, was uh, a young woman who was on, who won a, an award from a, from a science project. And she was only 14, I think she, she was, uh, let's see if I get her, her story right. And she, um, this is a scientist around the world we're trying to find this treatment right now, currently, for this coronavirus. This young girl, Anika Shabrolu, 14, from Fresno, Texas, she won the 2020 3M Young Scientist Challenge, $25,000 prize, for discovering what could provide the potential therapy for COVID-19. I find that channel awesome. Her divine connection of wisdom to be a student of truth, um, she's a young Indian, an Indian girl, just beautiful. She's also learning the India dance, you know, that very intricate dance with the hands and the posture and the balance, and that's another great goal of hers. But Anika, her invention was to use uh, in silico mythology to discover a a lead molecule that can selectively bind to that spike protein that we're so used to seeing. You know, that, that little bristle prickle ball that we step on every year when they fall from the trees is what I feel like the, is the same sample of what this COVID virus is. So she said, the last two days I saw that there's a lot of media hype about my project since it involves the virus and it reflects our collective hope to end this pandemic as I, like everyone else, want to go back to normal. She's such a sweetheart. And, and it goes on to talk about, um, you know, the statistics that we're all so familiar that we keep hearing how, how grim this pandemic has been in taking lives. But she says, Anika, an Indian American, submitted her project when she was in eighth grade. 
But it wasn't always going to be focused on finding this cure for COVID-19. Her goal used to be to identify the lead compound that would bind to a protein just for the regular influenza virus. She spent so much time researching pandemics from the, from the last one that we had um, so many years ago, hundreds of years ago, because of the immense severity of the pandemic and the impact it made on the world, I, with the help of my mentor, changed directions and targeted, targeted into this uh, recent research. And she was inspired to find these potential cures after learning from the 1918 pandemic how many people had died. She has an inquisitive mind and she uses her curiosity to ask questions about a vaccine for COVID-19. Her work, comprehensive and examined numerous databases. She's also developed an understanding of innovation processes and is a masterful communicator. You know, I, we were just sharing earlier, Kathleen and I were talking about these the children are just so innocent and pure and I am being saturated by time with with my grandchildren now, just watching this pure consciousness be imprinted and what, what are they learning and what is sticking and what is, what is coming back out through them? What are they receiving? And I have followed all of my friends' grandchildren and I have followed my own children and who they are now as young adults. And I just am in awe, the pure channels of wisdom that is ever flowing through each and every one of these young adults. And I just, that brings me that relentless optimism for our world, just knowing that people like Anita, Anika, are out in their world asking questions, following their curiosity, stepping outside the boundaries, and asking for a greater truth to be revealed, and then being bold enough, bold enough at her young age to step forward and then claim a prize for her, her work. Now another one that's um, some of these happy stories, I love to go to the animal ones. And this one in particular, because this little shelter dog named Ebba, she's using her unique talents to save the orca whale. And one key that was needed to serve this species was to study their feces, their poop. And her nose had a, had a gift for detecting, well, scat. We'll call it scat. And so it turns out she was the perfect tool for the research team. And the dog's owner, Deborah Giles, she's a marine biologist, adopted this mixed breed pup from a rescue. And she le soon learned how gifted it was and she takes it out on the boat and she enrolled it in a conservation canine program that trains dog to to hunt for these marine droppings and they this can include anything from genetics and the general health to stress levels that's what they can research when they pick up this but this little puppy gets on the top of the boat and right away sniffs just immediately was able to find these well pods and the, the owner is very careful not to let their work alarm these pods at all, but be able to harvest and then to learn and then en enable them to allow them to take all of those tools and do something for the, for the whale in its survival. And she said, um, the little dog, little body gets stiff at first like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm smelling it, I'm smelling it, and she's sniffing in the air, and as soon as we pass it, she'll run along the boat, which tells me they need to turn around and drive towards the sample. She said it's doubtful that Ebba truly understands how important this is, but she truly loves her job. Now, I, I translate that because I think we're all one. What if we, not we all have to go around smelling things to to make a difference in the world, but what if we all approached everything with that much joy and enthusiasm? We all have a divine appointment. And so there's, there's many stories of these dogs there's, and, and other animals too. One dog became a hearing dog for a, a serviceman 
who lost his hearing from the rocket attacks in Afghanistan, and he thought his life was over. He lost his hearing. And then they find this dog that is a sole companion to him now that brings back his life. There are so many law enforcement dogs that walk with the children of abuse into the courtrooms to bring comfort and to bring um, a sense of their, their heartbeats and their sense of warmth and comfort allows the child to have courage to face what is. And I, I find that what a wonderful use of, of what this world is all about. Looking at every animal, every human, every plant as an opportunity, as a subject of change, that we, we can invest ourselves in these stories and in these understandings. So that's just to name a few that I, I found when I read them and when I share them with you, I trust and I hope that your heart opens a little bit more that you, you end up smiling and wanting to explore those ideas a little bit. And so again, back to that, we are here by divine appointment. We're here at the right and perfect time. And as we learn to honor each other more authentically, we're beginning to shape these bridges of connection to a more powerful sense of wholeness. But I want to bring it back to even a more personal level than that, because we look out, but the, the true work is always from within. So what is this idea of building this bridge to the self? Building the bridge to the self, because like I said, some of the news media has allowed ourselves, some of the things that are happening in this town have allowed ourselves to divide and to feel disappointed, but there's hope. There is that hope that as we reconnect and we allow ourselves to look deeply into ourself, we can rise above. And instead of looking at all the little parts of everything, we're able to see the whole with divine eyes, with divine heart, with divine opening. So this idea can allow us to bridge every opportunity to see another side, to explore a greater vista as Storm had said, the higher the climb, the greater the vista. Now, Yogananda reminds us in the Yoga of Jesus that this is true. This sincere Christ consciousness that, in his words, is latent in every soul. This Christ consciousness is in, with, in his all. It's an integral part of us. To not focus on the parts, but keep understanding the whole. To know we are one with spirit, no matter what is going on, and knowing that this is the bridge to this self or to this Christ consciousness. Now, some of the quotes, this was from uh, Mehet Idan. He says, bridges symbolize change and flexibility. They show us this simple philosophy. When you're on one side, you really can easily move to the other side. Just take a look. Just take an opportunity to visit another side. Does it mean you have to stay on that side? Does it mean you have to set up camp, have a vacation there, but you went over, you took a look, and then you can have a choice. Do I want to stand in the middle of my bridge and be the, let this bridge be over troubled waters and rise above? So understanding the language, here's another one. Understanding languages and other cultures builds these bridges, the fastest way to bring the world together and to truth. Through understanding, people will be able to see similarities before differences and the encouragement to build bridges, not walls. That's Susie Chasm. She writes a book, Rise Up and Salute the Sun. I think her, her writings are brilliant. And when, when last week, when we had the Bridges Over Troubled Water, I was looking back at that, and Paul Simon, you know, he, he found that this song that he was writing was going to be one of those phenomenal um, songs that would do a lot of heart healing. He could feel it, but he couldn't find the exact how, way to end that. So he took himself to a cathedral and laid himself down in prayer, closed his eyes and just was really, be the, let me be the channel for how this song is supposed to unfold. And he had, he, there's this, right where he was having this prayer, there's the story about St. Catherine of Siena. She, and she was a doctor of the Catholic Church in 1370s. And she had dictated this 
whole story, but I'll call it the dialogue, that she heard the voice of God. And Paul, Simon, heard the voice of God when he went into that state of, of asking. And this is what the conversation was to St. Catherine. I have given you the bridge of my son. I have given you the bridge of my son. Now look, translate that into, I have given you the bridge of that latent possibility of Christ consciousness in each one of us. In order that passing across the flood, you may not be drowned. This bridge, my only begotten son, this Christ consciousness, has three steps of which two were made with the wood of the most holy cross and the third still remains the great bitterness he tasted. She goes on to explain that the soul strips herself of vice. Number one, on the second she fills herself with love and virtue of the cross. On the third she tastes peace. If I am lifted on high I will draw all things to me. He who goes over the bridge goes to life. My dearest sons, walk over the bridge, not underneath it. Now those are those moments as um, we were talking this week in our class dis discussing the yoga of Jesus. He, J Jesus was transmitting this truth to his disciples. So there's this sense of if you heard this today, but then maybe later you kind of thought what did that all mean and you look it up yourself and you take some time to digest it that transmission awakens us from a mundane level of reading some powerful words of truth to a place of great awe and you want to capture that and change your life forevermore so this in many spiritual traditions this bridge is symbolizing a connection or a bond between two banks or worlds the mundane and the divine divided by a river of life. And constructing and then crossing that bridge represents a radical transition of transformation, whereby we leave behind our transitory everyday existence and enter that enlightened realm of the eternal self. Now, yoga tradition relates this as the bridge to immortality, to the self, and that is in the Upanishads. In other words, the goal of practice is to realize all of this, everything going on. If we wanted to know, well, what is the whole? What is, well, why am I looking at the parts when I'm asked to look at the whole? It's to realize our connection, our self, to the one self, to the divine, to reach our goal. So we don't need to go searching far and wide we don't need to buy any special equipment or any more books. We need to recognize that we are already endowed with a toolkit of awakening. And a, and a, yes, amen. And that as we allow ourselves to quiet down in the turmoil, in the, in the storms, in the wind, and find that perfect center of stillness, we wake up to a greater idea. Now let me just point to these exact uh, support from Paramahansa Yogananda. One must follow what one knows to be right. In spite of criticism, everyone should honestly, without egotistical bias, analyze himself, and if he's right, he should hold on to his joy producing righteous actions uninfluenced by either praise or blame. But if one is wrong, he should be glad of the opportunity to correct himself, remove one more obstacle to lasting happiness. Even unjust criticism will make that disciple purer than ever and enthuse him all the more to follow the ways of inner peace instead of yielding to the temptations urged by bad company. It is in the company of God that one remains blessed. One has to find time for him in the peace of meditation. Why waste your leisure times in frequenting movies or watching TV or other idle pastimes? Cultivate and adhere 
to a divine habit. The devotee will find true impetus to rejoice in his inner cont contentment and in knowing he will ultimately inherit the kingdom of eternal fulfillment. Uh, what more can I say following the words of a master who continues to, to remind us that ask the questions because the pure in heart are the ones that inherit the truth. But the pure in heart means that you have to let go of trying to be right and fighting our way. So that gives me hope. That makes me smile. That makes me relax in my knowing that when I question my knowing, when I look at what's going on, I have to say, I still believe the way I believe because it feels like it's for the better good of all. And if I can answer that question that it's for the better good of all, so be it. So be it. So, you know, I, I was going to also, um, my time is, is complete here, but I wanted to just brush stroke this idea because I, for some reason, when I was reading this about bridges and I thought about the three billy goats gruff, do you guys remember that story? I loved to used to read that to my kids. Trip trap, trip trap, trip trap. Oh, who's that crossing my bridge? And I'd always try to make the troll just be such an ugly thing. And it just gets so excited about that, everybody crossing that bridge. Well, I was looking up, I thought, what's the, what's the story behind that besides greed is the, is the one message about that. But then the, the, this one, he's the spud man. I don't know if you've ever watched him, but he had the potato diet. He talks about, pay attention to the troll. Because the troll is actually the small voices inside of our head. And that troll is keeping us from our good on the other side of the bridge because it will question and doubt, make you doubt. And sometimes the little small ways it can bother us, the little goat can get onto the other side because it's like, okay, you made it, but you know, I'm still, still gonna bother the big guy, the big part of you with your self-esteem, your worthiness. So I leave you with that just to think, hmm, what are the trolls in my experience this week as I seek a greater good to unfold. So the three billy goats gruff, the stories never leave us, do they? No. So, and just see, if you're on a bridge over troubled waters, is there a reflection of God looking back at you because there's no separation? Track your heart, track your heart this week and look for those messages of truth. Now, another thing that Storm sent because he's doing the Ram Dass blog was perfect. So Storm, if you're watching, we love you and honor you for your way of finding so much information and pulling it into the moment where we are awake. So this from Ram Dass, I had always assumed the way to God was to deny your humanity and embrace your divinity. And then I realized that the way to truth might be through acknowledging the fullness of where I found myself to be, which was my humanity and my divinity. Beautiful Ram Dass. So in closing, let's join in an opportunity to remember the world, to sit in a moment of, of stillness right now. Let go of, let go of everything. And if you could take a moment to physically feel that, letting go of everything, every opinion, every little sense of bitterness inside of you, of reaction, of anger, of upset, of disappointment. Take a breath and when you exhale that out, feel it purge the deep heart center. And if you have had a particularly 
troubled week with the sense of the troll really bothering you. Put your hand on your heart and continue that deep breath as we breathe into humanity and we breathe into our divinity. The metta prayer of loving kindness really be that vessel right here, right now, that empty vessel of what was, yet still filled with divine light, divine joy, divine love, divine beauty, divine health, divine creativity, divine good. Fill your heart and see the light, the divine light, ever flowing from your heart space out into your world. Feel it in our humanity as we don't just lock in to the United States, but we go beyond. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be happy. May all beings be safe. May all beings awaken to the light of their true nature. May all beings be free. May I be peaceful. May I be happy. May I be safe. May I awaken to the light of my true nature. May I be free. May it be so. And gratitude for hearts that are open long enough to remember who we are. So be it. I am grateful. And so it is. Thank you. Journal. Well, thank you, Reverend Sue. That was a wonderful talk, and so I felt it so deep in my own heart. And so I, as we come to a close, I, I want to acknowledge that this center is alive and thriving. And as we are putting together our budget plans for next year, uh, we do appreciate those who are on the pledge program and to remember us. <laughs> that we're not going away, we're here and we're active during the week. We have our Zoom classes and more and more we're, we're doing things here at the center with uh, social distancing and, and proper protocols. And so we, we do see ourselves as a beacon and a place to come and to allow uh, growth individually and for the community. So with that, we give thanks for all that you give and all that you give, not only in your uh, money, but also in your time. The, uh, for those of you on Facebook Live, uh, you can check out our website at cslreading.org, and there are ways you can uh, make a donation or contribution or find out about other classes and so forth. So we give great thanks for today and for the message and the inspiration to move out uh, into this beautiful day. And I think we have a closing song from Dalton. Damien put his thumbs up. <laughs> so we're going to uh, allow ourselves to enjoy the song. And when that's over, the service is over. And a reminder, next week we will be officially open back uh, for those who want to come and, and be here live. Thank you. Thank you.
first morning Blackbird has spoken Like the first bird Praise for the singing Praise for the morning Praise for them springing Fresh from the to share just briefly for those of you that are still here um, I was reading about the the birds also this week and you know their songs changed since the pandemic I wondered about that just in my curiosity but because there's less traffic on the bridges and the air is cleaner their voices are crisp and their song has changed and I ask, what are you telling us? What is it for our ears to hear? May we hear you. And then this beautiful song. So, Blackbird. Let's listen deeper this week. Blessings, everyone. Thank you for being here today.